All right, what's up, savages? So today we're gonna use the uh, new Manta Flow fluid simulation to make a low poly waterfall. So before we get started, I just wanna let you guys know that uh, making this simulation is very frustrating, depending on your computing power. It may be frustrating for you as well. Every time you do a tweak, you change something, you have to wait for it to bake again. And sometimes these baking times can take a very long time. Uh, so that's what uh, slowed me down for, for making this simulation. Um, I wouldn't mess around with too many of the settings. I'll leave them as is, uh, especially if it says to do something with uh, the quality of the animation. I would just leave those so you can uh, enjoy your animation. So first thing what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave the cube here as the size it is. Because the smaller our, our objects, the faster it will render. All right, so I'm just going to name this Domain. I'm going to go up here, it will be my domain. So the domain is where the simulation takes place. Now I'm going to duplicate this cube. Shift A, oops, I just duplicated Shift D, and then just right click, boom. There's one right there in the same place. I'm going to double click in here. And I'm going to name that one ground. It's going to be the ground right there, ground. All right, so I got the ground here selected. My duplicate cube, the tab key for edit mode. I'm going to take an edit mode. Now I'm going to hide my domain over here. I'm going to click on the eyeball there. All right. Now I'm going to hit one for front view. Shift Z for wireframe. I'm going to drag select the top right here. Then G for grab. And then Z. Now I'm going to bring it down by 1.8 blender units. So minus 1.8 blender units. There we go. All right. So I got this here selected. Now I'm going to subdivide it. So I'm going to right click it and subdivide, just that top face right there. I'm gonna bring up the subdivide menu here. And let me try 40 subdivisions, see how that looks. Cool, looks good. I like that. All right, so I'm gonna go to the back to the solid viewport shader. And the reason I hid that domain is because if I'm in solid right here, and if I turn on, I, I unhide the domain, it's gonna hide my, it's gonna be in the way of my ground right there. So that's why I'm hiding it right now. Go away, domain. There we go. All right. So I'm going to hit send for top view. Switch over here to face selection. I'm going to hit alternate A to deselect. And then I'm going to use circle select to select a portion of uh, the top face here or top faces. Hit send for, on the number pad for top view. Hit C for circle. Now I got the little circle here on my mouse cursor. I'm going to spin the wheel, make it bigger. There we go. Now I'm going to hold on the left mouse button. See, and I'm just dragging across surface here that I'm going to select. Let me go something like this. I'm going to extrude this up right here. And then down here, there'll be a lake where the water lands. I don't want it looking all straight. I want it looking kind of roundish. So something like that looks good. And I'm going to right click to turn off circle select. There we go. One for front view. I'm going to hit E to extrude. E. Let's go up by 1.2 blender units. 1.2 blender units. There we go. Getting good. All right. And now I want the waterfall coming along there. And let me zoom out. So the domain is up to that edge right there. That line right there. Sorry. No, that's not an edge. That tally mark there. Uh, let's see. All right. Send for top view. Alternate to deselect. Alternate A. There we go. You kind of see that there. Not too good. So I'm going to uh, 7 for top view. And then the number two rotated a bit. There we go. See for circle select. And I'm just going to select the rest of this here. Make sure not to get those faces down there. If you do, I'll show you how to deselect them in a bit. All right, something like that. Right click. Accidentally selected those. See for circle select, the, for circle select again. Hold on shift and then left click, drag. There we go. You can deselect. Make sure I got nothing here. All right, I'm going to bring those up again. E. Point one enter. There we go. One for front view. I got a lot to go there. <clears throat> All right. So now seven for top view. Number two. Two again. Alternate A to deselect. C for circle select. And just select another portion here. Oops. Fix that in a bit. All right. Right click. And hold down. Hit the C key. Hold on shift. And left click there, deselect. Right click, turn off 
the uh, circle select. So now I'm hitting E, point one enter. That's good right there. All right, I want to subdivide this geometry here. Shift Z for solid. Uh, but if I use subdivide, it's going to add additional vertical uh, edges there. And I don't want that. I just want these horizontal ones here. Let me undo that. Oops. There we go. So instead, I'm going to use loop cut. So I'm going to hit Control R, one of these uh, vertical edges. Spin the wheel. Get more edges in there. Uh, I guess I should give you an exact number. So I'm going to hit the plus sign on my number pad. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times. And then enter two times. There we go. So I got more geometry there. So I got additional faces there. And I want this there because later I'm going to use another modifier to reshape the, the walls here. This, this walls are very flat. They're like skyscrapers. And I want this to look like the side of a waterfall. So I'm going to top view. I'm going to switch over here to face selection. See for circle select again. And I'm just going to select the area here that's going to get uh, pushed down for my stream of water. Maybe make the circle a little smaller. And it's going to go down through around here. All right, right click. There we go. So I got those selected there. And I get selected. Let me select that one with our shift key, select it. And C key. And just go up through here. Select these faces. Right click. Oh, let's get this one here. Maybe these here too. All right, those. I can skip those. Right click. I'm going to pull this down here by half a blender unit, or sorry, a tenth of a blender unit. So G, Z. Minus 0.1 enter. There we go. GZ minus 0.1 enter. And it brought that down. There you go. So the waterfall is going to go through here. So as you can see here, it's eroded away for where the water has been traveling through there. And see, I can also go over here to edge selection. I can select some of these edges around here and pull those down as well. And then GZ, pull those down. Uh, I don't like that pull over there, so I'm going to deselect that one. Let's get this one here, GZ, and there we go. So you can try stuff like that. You can leave them as is as well. Let's pull that one down. I can pull those other ones as well. All right, looking good. So I'm hit the tab key. Go back to object mode. All right. Now I'm going to go over here to the modifier in the properties panel. Click on the wrench. Add modifier. And I'm going to select this place. This place. So I'm going to deform this. There you go. Not like that, of course. So I'm going to work on this a bit. I'm going to bring the strength down to 0.1. There we go. Still, I don't like the look of that. Looks like a Fisher-Price toy. So I'm going to click right here, either on you or on these pills right here. There we go. I'm going to click on these pills. Now, right here, it says type, image and movies. Notice it's now it's in the texture tab. I'm going to click in here, and I'm going to select clouds. There we go. Deform my mesh. Now it looks a little more rocky. And it still looks low poly. And even got the ones here on the sides. If I didn't add additional geometry there, that would have not happened like that. It just would have been flat. You can try the other texture types. Musgrave. Musgrave looks pretty good. As long as I have this groove there, that's what I want. Let's try noise. That one's going to be crazy. There you go. Probably don't want that one. Uh, Veroni. I don't like that one. Uh, marble. Yeah, I like clouds. I'm going to go with clouds. Doesn't look too crazy. All right. <clears throat> and you can hit apply or leave it as is. I'm going to leave it like that just in case I want to make changes later. So now I want the water to come out of something. Or actually, first, I want the water to collide with this. I don't want the water from the water simulation to go through it. So I'm going to go over here to physics. Physics tab. I'm going to click on fluid. And then for type none, I'm going to click in here. It's going to be an effector. There you go, collision. Leave that as is. You can change it to guide, so you can guide the water. I'm going to leave it as collision, and it will uh, should stay in this groove later. And then for surface thickness, uh, you would think you would make it 1, but then the water is not going to stick at all to the surface of this. So I'm going to make it 0 0.9. There we go, 0 0.9. Now I'm going to bring in another cube. I'm going to place it over there. This cube's going to appear right there. Shift A, mesh, cube. There you go. I'm going to scale it down to a tenth of that. S, point one enter. There you go. G for grab. Put it about there. Seven for top view. Put it right over there. G for grab. 
There we go. And it can be floating up there, or you can bring it down a bit, GZ. Give it penetrated a little bit. Let's put it like right above it. I'm gonna choose an angle that's like kind of like down here. I can hide it later from the render. I can still get something like that. Should be a good view right there. All right, so it's gonna be in my flow. The water is gonna come out of here. I'm gonna go over here to fluid. And then for type none, I'm gonna click in there. I'm gonna select flow. Uh, the default flow type is smoke. I don't want to make smoke. There's also fire and fire and smoke. I want a liquid. I'm going with liquid. Uh, not geometry. If I go with geometry, the amount of liquid that emits from here, it's going to be the equal to the area here, the volume of the cube. So instead, I'm going with thin flow. That way, there's a constant flow of water coming out. Uh, sampling substeps, I'm going to go up by one. That way, I get a better quality render. Not too high. It's going to take longer to render. And my computer might crash. Not strong enough to support it. All right, so here's the domain. I'm gonna open the eyeball on that. There we go. Now I'm gonna click on Fluid. Actually, let me go here and name the other cube. So one of the cubes I have in there, this one right here, I'm gonna name that one Flow. So it's easier to keep track of one Flow. There we go. I'm gonna go back here to Domain again, open the eyeball there, select the domain, cool. All right, so Fluid selected for Domain. Now for Type None right here, go with Domain. The domain is where the simulation takes place. So notice uh, both of these are inside the domain there. <clears throat> so domain type, uh, gas is to make gas. I want to make a liquid, so I'm going to go with liquid. Gas would be for smoke or fire. Resolution division 64, I'm going to leave that as is. You can go higher for a higher quality render, but that will also take longer to render. Uh, also, if you increase these, you'll get a higher quality render. Uh, these won't, rend these won't uh, stress it out as much as this one up here. So I'm going to go up with 8 and 6 right here. All right, so it gives me a better flow. Uh, these are the port collisions. These are the, this is the outside of the domain here. So the front, uh, the back, all the sides. Uh, if the simulation, the water goes off to the sides, it'll either bounce back or, or get deleted. So I'm just going to leave it there so it collides with that. The name of the uh, liquid simulation is Flip. There's other types, but right now currently there's the only one there. It's basically like the, the splash animation. I don't want it too strong, so I'm going to bring it down to 0.5. There we go. Particle radius. It's basically like the amount of uh, fluid that's going to come out. I'll leave that as is. This was also the quality of it. I'm going to activate mesh. Uh, mesh is the, uh, the actual fluid, the thickness of it. Because if you just bake data here, you're just going to get the little particle uh, icons, the little particles for the animation. Uh, down here, frame start and end, it's how long our animation is. If I leave it as, at 50, it won't animate the whole thing. It'll probably just animate uh, about halfway. So I'm going to increase it to 100 frames. It's going to take longer to render. And I'll decrease my timeline here to 100 frames as well. So before I bake my simulation, I want to make sure of a couple things. First, I have to uh, make sure that the center of mass right here that center point is in the center of the domain i haven't moved this cube it's the original default cube so i know it's still there i didn't move it i didn't reshape it but in case you change the size of it move it somewhere else you're going to want to select the, all your objects right click them go to set origin and then select origin and center of mass volume make sure it's volume the this cube down here can't select it here so i'm going to get it from here that one i did reshape so maybe the center of mass uh, did move. See, it's down there somewhere. So I'm going to select it here in the outliner. I'm going to right-click it. Go to set origin. Origin center of mass volume. There we go. And then this one up here, uh, sure it didn't move as well. Flow should be in the center there. And another thing you want to do as well, you're going to want to apply the scale. Maybe you change the shape of it, the scale of it. You're going to want to apply the scale. The domain, I didn't really change it either. But to do this, it's Control A and select Scale from that Apply menu. I did change the shape over here of the effector. So let me go to Ground, Control A, Scale. There we go. I'm going to add the word effector here to the ground name. Effector. There we go. And the effect with the um, with the simulation there. And flow. Control A, Scale. All right. And so now the amount of fluid coming out should be scaled relative to everything around it. All right, so go back to domain. And now to bake data, this uh, can take a while depending on the resolution. 
the higher the resolution, the higher some of, some of these values, the better quality you uh, render you will get. But it's also going to take a lot longer to render. So I'm going to bake this one here and just wait for it. All right, so this is done rendering or baking. And right here we can see how the simulation will play out. There it goes. So now I need to bake the mesh. These are just little uh, voxels. It's like a 3D pixel. A 3D pixel. Uh, some YouTubers, I heard them call them uh, particles. Particles are actually something different. But if I go to rendered or solid, uh, the domain here is going to get in the way of my animation. So what I need to do is bake the mesh so I can see it. Currently, I'm in the wireframe viewport shader. I'm going to scroll down. Here's the settings for the mesh. Uh, the border collisions as well. This is the domain. I can have this uh, now bounce off the walls there. I can make it so that it um, deletes, gets deleted. All those boxes that hit the, the border there. If I decide to remove some of these uh, side ones like left, right, front, and back. Now I'm going to bake the mesh. I'm going to scroll down over here. This right here will also increase the quality of your render. It multiplies this number right here, the resolution divisions. The resolution divisions are the, um, the it's like a subdivision of the whole cube. So now there, so with 64, I imagine there's about 64 subdivisions in there. If I increase the number, these will be smaller. I'll get a better uh, render, better detailed uh, animation, but it's also going to take longer to bake. This one already took a really long time, time to bake. Um, I can increase it up. Uh, I'm, I don't know if I should. I'm a little afraid of that. This is going to make the, um, it's going to give me more fluid. This one is just how the how it renders. So you can get the preview render or the final version of it. Smoothing, this will make it smoother. So I'm going to smooth it up a bit. This is also going to increase the render time. But the baking here doesn't, um, it's not going to take us, the baking of the mesh will not take as long as the baking of the domain up there. So maybe I will go up by one. And this is the, um, like the craters that it makes when the water gets hit by something, something falls in there or other water falling into it. I'll just leave those as is. Bake mesh. So the baking of the mesh is done. So let's check that out. There we go. Splash. There we go. Splash, bam. It's going kind of slow, kind of gooey, right? We go over here to rendered. There we go. And you might notice these, uh, Little particles there in the voxels and if your mesh looks kind of rough just right click it select shade smooth I already did that earlier I forgot to I recorded it but I don't think it's gonna be in this uh, final version shade flat so flat looks like this looks a little rougher just right click the, the domain mesh there shade smooth there we go Looks a little gooey I got some splash all right, if you want to activate the particles, you can open particles here. Activate spray, foam, and bubbles. So by default, these will not be activated. You got to click in there, turn them on. So spray is just like just like ocean spray. It's that water that splashes out. Uh, foam would be the foam that would form on top of water. Bubbles would be the bubbles inside of water or uh, carbonated beverages. Uh, these behave act like actual particles. Like if you go in over here to the particle system, they're right there, see? Bubble spray foam. I can select one and then edit it around here. So render is halo. I can change it to something else. Try render as a object. It'll give me a different animation. I can select an object for that one. Let's leave it as a halo. It's like a little pixel, 3D pixel, similar to a voxel. Physics. So uh, I'm going to activate those, but I don't think it's going to make a difference. So I'm going to click on Big Particles, and we'll see if we see any splash or bubbles in there. Big Particles. This one's a lot faster, so you can see already. Uh, there's bubble buoyancy. Settings for all the different stuff in there. That's just how fast the bubbles go up. Or bubble drag, how easily they follow the, the flow of the water simulation. Uh, wave crest, so when the water splashes. Easily creates uh, spray. I got some more stuff in there, but yeah, really play around with these to get a good look. You're gonna have to go to particles, 
and then create little objects for them. So you're gonna have to uh, bring in like a UV sphere, or Eichel sphere, and create a shape for a bubble and all that other stuff. These aren't gonna, the default settings aren't gonna do much for you there. But that's also gonna take a lot longer to render. Diffusion right here. Let's say you want this to have the consistency of oil. You can click in here and select oil. Uh, the default setting here is water. It doesn't say water here, but these settings here are for water. There's also another setting in there for honey. Uh, you can go online and look up the uh, viscosity settings for um, different liquids, different fluids, and you will know what to use for base and exponent there. Right now they're grayed out because I already baked my domain. Did the big bake here. If I want to get, make any changes here, I'd have to free the data. And I can make the changes there. Same thing in the diffusion. But that one takes a really long time to bake, so I don't want to bake that one again. This is, uh, I think, my fourth attempt trying to make this video. Also, if I increase the frame length here, if I go up to uh, 120, 210, 250, whatever, it's only going to animate up to 100. After that, the simulation actually just disappears. So another thing I can do, I can, um, let's say I want the water already down here. I can start the frame, frame start at minus 100. And then wherever it is at 100, I'll get that here. And it's the inflow, so it'll just constantly be flowing out water there. All right. So I'm going to color this. I can either play in or I can pause it. I'm going to make a low poly waterfall. I'm going to select my water there, the domain materials. And I'm going to change this to glass, principal BSDF. I'm going to go with the glass. I'll also choose glossy. I'm going to go glass. And it's reflecting the stuff around it already. Uh, bring the roughness all the way down to zero. And the IOR of water index of refraction is dot one dot three 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 three. Bunch of threes. There we go. Activate screen space refractions there. And go over here to render. I like to activate all of these here. Uh, over here, screen space refraction. You're gonna want to open that. Activate refraction there. Then you'll get a good effect of the IOR. All right. And let me give this material here a name. Water domain water. So it looks like that material was applied to the other objects as well. I accidentally applied them there, so that's why um, everything's that same color. So let me select that one here. Yes, yeah, so you got to apply there on my ground effector. Uh, I can just hit this minus key right here, this minus button. It's going to remove it from there. There we go. See, now there's a default one there. I want this to be a uh, rock, it's a shade flat. I'm gonna look really rough. All right, I'm going to go to new and base color go with the gray color. There we go. Rock. All right, I want to add some other colors in there as well. Maybe let's see. Maybe some green up there. The tab key Freda mode. Alternate AD select, seven for top view, and create a big drag selection here. Get the top faces there. There we go, I got some down there as well. Try to color all in green or just some. I guess we'll go with that, see what happens. Plus sign, new, green grass, base color. So that'll look like a low poly green sign. Alternate A. Let's go. I'll take that and maybe change the color of that down there. Let's see. I'm going to use circle select. C for circle. Hold on the left mouse button and drag across there. And it's just selecting the stuff behind the simulation there as well. Spin the mouse wheel to make the circle select smaller. Hold on left mouse button and drag up right here. Up the waterfall. There we go. Let me go over to frame 100 where the uh, animation ends. There we go, the simulation. And I'll select these here as well. These, uh, since they're wet, I may, I'm gonna make them a darker darker black color there. And then it looks like the water splashing all the way over there. So I need to select some of that as well. All right, big one right here. And get all the stuff here in the middle that I can't see. If you want to see it, Shift Z for the wireframe. You can see inside of it there. All right, so plus sign. New, it's gonna be wet rock. 
not west rock, let's see, let's see wet rock, there we go. Make it a darker gray. You try to make it shiny too, increase the metallic on it a bit. Use a specular. Let's see, assign, start seeing that there. Tab key for object mode. There we go, so I can see you going through there already onto that liquid. And I think I'll leave the other ones alone there. All right, uh, the water's still looking kind of dark. Cesspool water, we don't want that. We want it to reflect its colors here. Oh, that's cool, see that it came out cool looking there. We want it to reflect kind of like a sky color. So I'm gonna get an HDRI file. So I already have some downloaded, but you can download some at hdrihaven.com. Free downloads. So three guys uploaded these pictures. They run off donations, 195 to go. I think they've been eating that much for a while now. All right, so I'm gonna go over here. So after you download one of those files, make sure to put it somewhere where you can um, put it into your project, like the desktop or um, project folder, because by default, it's gonna to download to the uh, downloads folder. If you don't know how to download one, let's go to HRIs here. And then you can navigate through here. I wanna get something with the sky color in there, nature, something outdoorsy. Like a nice blue sky, clouds is cool. I guess I can go with the night scene as well. I got something here already. Uh, world. So click on the world icon on the properties panel. I look for color, and then there's a gray bar. That color there is that color of the background there. Click on this ribbon right here. Get this pop-up menu. What environment texture? Environment texture there. And I'm gonna click on open here. And I already got a folder here called Asia Rise. There we go, and I'm gonna go with uh, sunflowers. We'll click that one in. It should come in in a bit, and then my background will be that sky there. There we go. So I'm gonna water pick up some of those colors there. There's some of that green there. All right. So I don't want this to be visible in my final render. I just want to get the that right there. I'm gonna bring in a blue a blue plane so I can make like a fixed sky. Shift A mesh plane, maybe down here somewhere. Oh, it's right there in the origin. Temper top view, G for gram, put it over here. GY, stand it up along the Y axis. So I'm gonna get a view from like an angle like right here, or this angle, this angle looks better. That's good. This, I wanna hide from the render. So I'm gonna click on the filter up here. Click on this camera icon right there. All right, there it is, so there's my flow. Cause I can still see it here, and if I were to render this out, I'll still be able to see it. So I'm just gonna hide it here from the viewport shader and hide it here from the render. So in the final product, I won't see it. All right, back to my plane. RX90 enter, stand it up. All right, that's for scale, let's make a humongous there. And let's see, I'm gonna want a view like around, that looks kind of good, control alternate zero. Shiny water. I want to get some of that in there, so I'm going to go over here to the animation workspace. And it's like my camera here. G for grab, just pull it back. There we go. Maybe I want to play around with it some more. So I'm going to go over here and G for grab. And there we go, because I don't need to see the bottom of it there. So that's a good cutoff there. Let's see. There we go. I don't want to see the edge of that as well. You don't want to see the edge of that one either. Let's see how it looks over here. Let me shoot zoom in. You know what? Maybe I do want it to be a floating island. So I'm going to go back some more. Mark shading. Sorry. Animation. G for grab. And just make it obvious it's a floating island. There we go. That's a good angle there. Kind of looking up on it. Like to layout over here. Select my plane there. SX, make it long along the X axis. There we go, G for grab, just put it over there. G for grab, pull it down. Just make it big enough to cover up the background there. And that I'm just gonna make it like a sky blue color. Materials, view. There we go, Z for camera view. All right, I can even add like a fake cloud in there somewhere. Or a little fake sun as well. Uh, I like the look of that. Let me just hit F12. Get a preview of uh, frame 100 there. See how the water looks. See how that background's working there with it. 
It's taking a while, huh? There we go. That's cool. The water looks uh, looks very real. You can see through it there. Nice, nice little waterfall. I like the look of that, so I'm gonna leave it as is. Uh, another thing you do to give a little bit of more of a realism, or not necessarily realism, but give it more of a pop. You can insert um, an icosphere. As for scale, bring it down, G for grab. Put these around the sides here. Let's see, RX, rotate it, uh, decimate it. Over here to the modifier, add modifier. Go to decimate right here. And then increase this here. It'll reduce the geometry on it, make it look even more low poly. You can see you break it down there already. And go to materials. It's going to call this one a brown rock. Yeah, let's make it brownish. It could even be gold in there too, right? A gold nugget. There we go. Let's see, RY. And you just put these around your around your island here. Where is that at? Shift D. Let's go with Z. RY. RZ. Let's put those around. Maybe that's for scale. Shift D. Let's put one over here. RX, RY, Oops. RY, there we go. This gives a little more of a, of a pop doing stuff like this. GY, push that back. All right. <clears throat> Maybe add a tree in there as well. Shift A mesh. Let's go with the cube here. Monk's cube as for scale. G. S, I'll put this over here. S, make it taller. S to Z. There we go. Spin train the mesh there. Decimal key, zoom in center. There we go. Let's see R, Z. And then bring in like a, a cone. Shift the mesh. Humongous cone. G for grab. Let's put it up here. 7 for top view. S for scale. Shift Z so I can see that. My uh, cube down there. There we go. One for front view. GZ, pull that up. There we go. Let's make it taller. SZ. GZ. There we go. Shift Z. Let's see camera view. Cool. And color that green. Give it a different shade of green. Green tree. With the darker green here. There we go. And then the trunk here. Give that a trunk color. Trunk bark. Maybe a darker brown or a lighter brown. That looks cool right there with me. Alright. Join these here. Control J join. And then shift E. Put one over here somewhere. You can make it smaller as well. Shift for grab. Let's put it over, over here on this step over here. Not far enough. GX. Well, I guess I'll put it way down here. GZ. And then rotate it a bit. So I'm rotate it this way. RX. All right. I'll surrender this one. I got all these settings here activated. Make sure you open screen space refractions. Reflections, open that one up. Activate refraction there. All right, so I'm gonna go over here to the output tab. I'm just gonna render all 100 frames. Uh, you know what? We can add music in there too. There's a site. I'm not gonna add the audio, but there's a freesound.org. Freesound.org, I typed in stream. You can download these and insert them into your animations as well. That one sounds calming. These with the big waves like that, it's just gonna sound too chaotic. Sounds like static. I don't like the sound of that one. All right, so AVI JPEG, unless you're gonna do audio, you're gonna go with FFmpeg, and then open encoding, and 
you can change the video codec there. You can try um, MP4, MP4, and then make sure to change the video codec here to AAC if you're going to insert audio. But I'm doing one without audio. So I'm just going with AVI JPEG, Control F12, and wait patiently from there. So there it is. There's my animation. Cool. The water going, you can see here in that corner there where it hits the domain wall. Also could have made a bigger domain so it kind of just falls off the edge right there. It would have been cool, retrospect, and add some clouds. So uh, I'll quickly make one and I'll show you guys here. But uh, thank you for watching. Have an awesome day. Take care.